YouTube, today we're looking at a chain which is hanging partially off the edge of a table. Now we're going to release this chain from rest and allow it to accelerate until the entire chain has come off the edge of the table. Now in this version of the problem, we're going to say there's some friction between the chain and the table. And we're going to solve for the final velocity of the chain just as it leaves the table. Now there's several assumptions which we need to make in this problem. The first assumption is that the chain is going to remain in contact with the table even after it slides off the edge of the table. That is to say, this edge of the chain isn't going to go shooting off to the right here as it speeds up horizontally coming off the table. The other assumption which we're going to make is that the normal force between the table and the chain is equal only to the weight of the chain which is resting on the table. Now in order to get a handle on the complexity of this problem, the first thing I want to do is graph our two forces which are causing the chain to either speed up or slow down as it comes off the edge of this table. And we're going to look at those forces as a function of the position of this chain, or more specifically, as a function of how much chain is hanging off the edge of the table. Now we're going to start with some initial length of chain hanging off the edge of this table, I'm going to call that Li. And we're going to let this chain keep sliding off the table until the entire chain has come off the edge of the table. Meaning we're concerned with the magnitude of these forces from some position Li all the way out to L. So first looking at the force of gravity. It's true that gravity is acting on every link in this entire chain. But if you look at this chain as though it's being pulled in one direction by gravity and the other direction by friction, it's the force of gravity that's acting on this hanging chain, dragging everything off the edge of the table, that we're concerned with. Now if you would imagine the entire chain sitting up here on top of the table, with just one tiny little link hanging off the edge, there would be very little force by gravity. But as the chain moves farther and farther off the edge of the table, the force by gravity which is pulling this chain off the table is going to increase. Which means our force by gravity acting on the chain looks something like this. Now taking a look at our force of friction, we see a bit of the opposite case. You see, if there's lots of chain up here on the table, that means there's going to be a large force by friction. And as that chain is drug off the edge of the table, that force of friction is going to decrease. Meaning we'd see a line that looks like this. A force acting against the motion of the chain, which is initially large, but gets smaller as more and more of the chain is drug off the edge of the table. So let's take the concepts from this graph and turn that into math, looking at each force individually. Starting with gravity, we know the force by gravity is equal to mass times g, the acceleration due to gravity. But the issue in this problem is it's not the entire mass of the chain which is causing the chain to move off the edge of the table. It's only this little bit of chain right here. Which means we're going to have to consider in our force of gravity equation only the mass of chain hanging off the edge of the table. Now to do that, the first thing we need to talk about is the mass per unit length of the chain. Now mass per unit length is given by this Greek letter lambda. Realize that's equal to nothing other than the total mass of the chain divided by the total length of the chain. Now at any given point, the force by gravity causing this chain to move is going to be given by the mass of chain hanging off the edge of the table. So if there's some length of chain, I'm going to call it L, hanging off the edge of the table, multiplied by the mass per unit length, that would in fact be the mass of chain hanging off the edge of the table. So multiplying that by G would give us the total force by gravity acting on the chain. Now going back to our graph which we discussed earlier, you can see a linear increase in the force by gravity. And that's entirely what this equation predicts. As L, the length of chain hanging off the edge of the table, increases, we see a linear increase in the force by gravity. Now moving on to the force by friction. We know friction is given by mu, the coefficient of friction between the chain and the table, times Fn, the normal force between the chain and the table. And you'll remember, we said the normal force was going to be equal to the mass of chain sitting on the table times g. Now much like we did over here, I want to express this mass m as a function of how much chain is hanging off the edge of the table. Now the length of chain sitting on the table is not going to be L, the amount of chain hanging off the edge of the table. It's going to be L, the total length of chain, minus little l, the length of chain hanging off the edge of the table. So if we multiply that by lambda, we now have the mass of chain sitting on the table. Then multiplying that by g gives us our total friction force. 
Now going back to our graph, you can see the force of friction starts large and steadily decreases. And this equation supports that concept. As L gets larger, the friction force is going to decrease. Now the issue in this problem is that we can't just take these two forces, slap them in Newton's second law, and call it a day. What we have here are two forces that are functions of position. So what we're going to need to do is look at the work done by each of these forces. See, work is given by force times displacement. So starting with gravity, we know work is given by force times displacement. So the work should equal the force times gravity multiplied by however far we allow this chain to move. The issue is, if we allow this chain to move downward just a little bit, let's say some infinitely small distance dl, the force of gravity is going to change. So what we're going to do is take this force of gravity at one particular length and multiply it by an infinitely small displacement, which we're going to call dl. Go back to calculus class. This is a infinitely small change in the length of chain hanging off the edge of the table. And in letting that chain move downward an infinitely small amount, some work is going to be done. In fact, we're going to call it an infinitely small amount of work, dw. So if we want to come up with the total work by gravity, we're going to need to look at the infinite sum of all of the little works done by gravity. That is fg dl. And we're going to want to look at all of those little works that are done by the chain as it moves from some initial length Li to some final length L, where the entire chain has come off the edge of the table. Or to go back to the graph, we're looking for the area under the curve of the force by gravity. So substituting our equation for the force by gravity into this function, realize the mass per unit length and g are just constants. And evaluating that integral, we're left with this function, the work done by gravity as the chain's pulled all the way off the table. And next, looking at our work by friction, we're going to allow our friction force to act over a very small distance dl. Now realize these are in opposite directions, so there's going to be a negative there. But adding up all those little works done by friction and taking the infinite sum of all the work done by friction, we again have a bunch of constants, mu, lambda, and g. And make sure to be real careful with the distribution of your negatives when evaluating this integral. We're left with this function, which yeah, looks pretty ugly, and, and I'm sure we could spend some time reducing this down to a simpler form. But going back to our graph, realize it's nothing other than the area under the curve of the force by friction. So now that we have the work done by both of these forces, we're going to turn to the work energy theorem to solve for the final velocity of this chain. See, the work energy theorem says that the change in kinetic energy of some object is equal to the work done on that object, which in this case is the work by gravity plus the work by friction. And again, be careful with the negatives because really this work by friction is negative. Now in this version of the problem, we haven't actually been given the mass of the chain. And kinetic energy is given by 1 half mv squared. Realize, this m is actually the total mass of the chain. So we can actually say the kinetic energy is going to be 1 half times L, the length of the chain, multiplied by lambda, the mass per unit length, giving us the total mass of the chain. After all, it is the entire chain which is speeding up. Now we're going to say that chain's moving at some final velocity, Vf, and then squared. So now we have our kinetic energy term, and we're going to set that equal to the sum of the two works done on our chain. Now the first thing you'll notice, the mass per unit length of the chain cancels out. Then rearranging this for v final, gives us this function. And substituting the numbers given to us in the problem, we find the final velocity of the chain is 4.02 meters per second. So this has been how to work the chain sliding off a table problem with friction. And at the risk of sounding like I'm selling out, don't forget to like and subscribe. But on that note, that's all for now.